she was named the Huntress Diana, but everyone referred to her simply as Diana. Placed on top of the largest pedestal ever to hold up a statue, Stanford White's Madison Square Garden, she was as controversial as she was beautiful. Diana was St. Gaudens' only nude female sculpture, and she was absolutely one of the most beautiful things to see in New York at the time. She was lit up at night, and she rotated, and you would have the lights bouncing off her gilded surface in the evening and at night, and then in the day with the sun hitting that golden surface. It just was riveting. Then as now, nudity was a tremendously controversial issue, and it was said that proper New Yorkers felt very uncomfortable about seeing this nude figure on the top of Madison Square Garden, and the fact that it was gilded and blazed in the sunlight and was incandescently lit at night, and made a lot of people feel very uncomfortable and earned a lot of critical censure. But on the other hand, it is one of St. Gaudens' most iconic pieces now and was one of his most popular commercial works. It's obviously a classical figure, mythological figure, Diana the Huntress. But I also like to think of it as a great classical American weather vane. It was meant to turn. Here again, St. Gordon's exploitation of the silhouette, something that he goes back, maybe not in a conscious way, but to that craft tradition, that American folk tradition of not Dianas, but, but, but cows and Indians turning on barn roofs. Here, St. Gordon's has taken that American idea and translated it into an urban, literally modern setting. The original Diana was 18 feet tall and it quickly became apparent that it was too big for the building. So St. Gaudens created a more refined 13-foot version that is the icon that we know today. For St. Gaudens, the Diana was more than just a professional success. It was also very personal. The model for the face was a Swedish woman by the name of Davida Clark, and he would eventually fall in love with her. It was no secret that Stanford White and St. Gaudens enjoyed the company of women, and there were a number of affairs during their outings in New York. But this one did not end. There was something about her that captivated him, and he would use her likeness in other works, including the Amor Caritas. She had very beautiful classical features, but he was also drawn to her as a person, and eventually they would form a friendship which would lead to an intimacy and eventually the birth of a child. <laughs> 